What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 357 of Opinions May Vary. I'm your host, Jared. My co-host with me, Alex. Hello. Back in the chair this week is our main man, Colin. Ah, uh, fuggity boom. That's, That's the my new, new thing. expression. That's what I'm saying now. It's yep. a thing. Get used to it because I'm here. Yep. It's the, it's the, what's another version? It's the Tobey Maguire episode. <laughs> the role of Alex That's, Squires. We didn't promise by that last, last week. We promised something James different. James Franco uh, as JR. Anyways, give us, pick- a, give us a Harry Osborne. My father. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? That was great. I was thinking like James Franco in like Pineapple Express, but you were on brand with Spider Man. Yeah, that was a smarter it, choice. I feel like every line James Franco said was just "my father" in a more brooding <laughs> fashion. I uh, remember in his my favorite line of his in Spider Man Two is after like the experiment goes wrong and he steps outside and he like sort of looks in the camera and he's like, "I'm ruined." <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we're here to pick up our chat. We're going to pick up right where we left off, talking about some Spider-Man, Spider-Men, Spider-Women, the spiders, people. Uh, Spider-they, them. And uh, let's just jump right into it. So what do you... I, I was asking you before what you wanted to see in the second one, and you started to talk about how you haven't read a lot of, like, Superman, or Superman, Spider-Man stories itself. Mm. So is that kind of where you're, you're kind of unsure what you want in the next one? Yeah, like, because, like... It's e- it's so easy to just be like, oh, it'd be cool to see Venom and Carnage, but like it would all like you know, would you want to see Craven? Yeah. Or would you want to hold off for a little bit? Like maybe not yet. Like save it for for like the finale or whatever. Like, do you think they're gonna continue with the Spider Verse stuff, or do they need two, to? They announced two things that they're doing a sequel, direct sequel with Miles and whatever comes from that, and they're doing a a side quill. That's Gwen, um, Spider Woman, um, hmm. which is the Je- Jessica Drew, Drew, yeah. and Silk, Jessica, yes, Drew, um, and uh, so we'll get both of those, which I think is sweet. Good thing I held on to my Edge of Spider Verse number two. They're making a Spider Gwen movie. Mm. Not gonna ever sell it. I don't sell anything because <laughs> I'm, I'm too attached. Um. I should have waited till now, but I needed the money. Um, I will be excited for, like, I think the movie has done really, really well critically, obviously. Um, it hasn't made as much money as fucking Aquaman, which sucks. Like, One of them is a major studio the release is... action movie. The other is an animated film. <laughs> I know, still, but it's like... Not to say that, like, one is, but, like... One is not better than... Yeah, yeah the point is, like... <laughs> one is is you know there's an artist vision and it's but it's also like a movie by committee in so many ways and one is like a is all art um so hopefully this gives other studios like you know fuck it let's do an animated batman movie that has nothing to do with this or let's do an x-men animated movie and fucking like really shows what the medium can do and like how effective that storytelling can be like I know we're getting a fucking Morbius movie, which is like, Morbius, cool. Jared Leto, less cool. Mm. Um, they were going to do a Silver Sable and Black Cat movie. That got canceled, but they're doing a Black Cat movie. Hmm. So, like, take my money. Ju- I'm in for that. We should just get a Cravenverse <laughs> movie. Just Craven kills Edge the of Marvel Cravenverse. Universe. Edge all, of Cravenverse. Just give me five Cravens on the screen. Um, That'd be great. All the different cravens. Oh, Kevin you know Nash, what? Never mind. We could, <laughs> like, we yeah. could do that in just one mo- in one universe. Because yeah. there's uh, main Craven, and then there's his brother. You could be a Craven that hunts down all the Spider Men from different universes. And then there's his wife and uh, his daughter. So we're at four now. Mm-hmm. And I think there was like, uh, yep, his son. There's another one. So there's five. We got, we, we got to five. I would like to see. Um, in a sequel, I'm excited that Miguel's going to show up. Um, hopefully, he's like more of a presence. Miguel or it would be funny Spider-Man if he was only the post credits every time <laughs> was like him doing something else. That'd be really funny. Um, it's going to take us ten years to get to his mission. I think it would be really funny to do to put Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire in them too. Like, why the fuck not? Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, they don't have to have big parts, but like, fucking do it. Put Eddie Brock's fucking Tom Hardy in there. You know, I thought you were going to say Tover Grace. Oh my God! Put Topher Grace in there, right? Come on, like do it all. Who cares? 
Like you have the entire universe at your disposal. Like now it's the perfect like well, Spider Verse I mean, is the perfect they, excuse to be like, yeah, they're all fucking valid. Maybe they're all he friends. could get like two lines. Yeah. Yeah. He could say, That's I it. like being bad. <laughs> That's his line. <laughs> oh man! You know, I I try to make the argument that I enjoy Spider Man three, and then you say shit like that, and I'm like, oh god, and I cringe at myself. Spider Man three had some fun shit, you know. I saw it twice in theaters. I don't give a shit what anyone <laughs> says. We should watch it like right now, like like literally right now. Yeah. Right, Stick around, folks, it. for the uh, for the commentary for Spider Man three. What are we at on time? Uh, we're at an hour and fifteen. Oh, we should probably end. <laughs> no, there's so much more to talk about. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of things. I like the Sunflower song from Post Malone, which I'm like into Post Malone now. The soundtrack was pretty good. Right. Watching the I movie, can't tell if you're making fun of me. No, I'm serious. Because weren't like, you the guy who was like, yo, Post Malone? And yeah, I was like, I was I'm like, kind of like into Post Malone. And then everyone's like, what? Who? What, yo, you, and Whitney, it's a good song. It's I good song. mentioned that to the guy who sits next to me at work because he's like up on all that stuff. <laughs> And like he mentioned, he said something, and I was like, "That's a good Post Malone song." He's like, "Yeah, it is." And then like it clicked, and he's like, "You what? You like Post what?" And I was like, "Yeah, dude, it's a great album." Like at this yeah, time, man. he only had the one, but beer bottles and Bentleys. He's uh, he makes surprisingly uh, catch tunes. It's like sad rap songs on yeah. acoustic guitar, and I'm like, "What the fuck is this?" Exactly. So I'm excited for Post Malone to have his own movie. <laughs> Edge of Post first. <laughs> <laughs> Edge of Spider Verse. I keep calling it Edge. Into Spider Verse was monumental. It was. Uh, I, I keep my the main thing. And I already said this once before about something else, but it had no business being as good as it was. <laughs> it was. It was probably the but best it, like, movie I it saw. Shows year. you like what how good these things can be. Yeah. If and you also just let create like these are it's Phil Lord and Chris Miller and like these are the guys. This is a point I was kind of getting to before was like they if you uh, let a creator who's passionate about a project like make their thing like mm-hmm. these guys were on solo they left star wars because like disney was telling them what to do yeah we hear stories all the time from directors who are like i can't fucking make a marvel movie mm-hmm. they just tell me what to do the whole time yeah, man we could have got fucking edgar wright on ant-man yeah. dude like fucking a like <laughs> so when you have someone when you just let creators create like just let sam raimi do what he wants to do avi arad shut up about venom like we get it you fucking you should look up who wrote the fucking venom episode in the cartoon you know who it was avi arad that dude won't stop like hey venom's really popular oh god <laughs> flash thompson or bust um, <laughs> um so i i'm i'm excited that i think we're gonna head back towards like aquaman is a good good kind of jumping out like James Wan they started to distance themselves like Patty Jenkins Wonder Woman 2 is going to be you know fuck all the noise about the I know everyone thinks they want like their own universes but in so many ways it limits you you know there's there's goods and bads but well you just got to do it right <sighs> sounds like it's easier I mean, said than done I mean you you say that with anything you just have to do it right it's, anything can be good as long as you do it right but like one isn't intrinsically better than the other I, is my point. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. 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 And this one thing <laughs> that kind of... Because I remember back in the day when Marvel was was just steamrolling DC in terms of movies. Like Green Lantern <laughs> tries to come out. Green Lantern and, comes out. Captain America comes out. Yeah. And my first thought is start firing people at DC right now. Yeah. like Whoever was involved with Green Lantern, just you're fired. But the main argument is at the time was always, yeah, well, I mean, DC destroys marvel and animated like what marvel has in in live action dc kills and animated mm-hmm. they they just no one can top dc and animated and then marvel's like time to let's put an end to this like try and top this shit how many well, i mean how but, is, but is that took like 10 years i mean spider verse they did it <laughs> but spider verse even then is like a mar it was like a production from marvel but like they didn't it was sony's right baby Mm-hmm. You know, but still, I mean, did you ever read the emails that leaked about Sony? Remember the Sony leak? That's how this movie got announced, according to IMDb. Like the Sony leak shows, mm-hmm. like Amy, I want to say Pascal, um, who works for Sony, like talking about their plans, and one of them was 
okay, so we'll do the Andrew Garfield. We'll do like two and three. We'll do the Sinister Six. And then I think obviously we'll do Andrew versus Toby. Like was like a movie they wanted to make. Hmm. Hmm. Like, so they already had, there's a lot of, they had some bad ideas, but some <laughs> some inspired ones, you know? So it's, it's I'm glad that they got a win because I think they needed one. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Now we just need a good X-Men movie. <laughs> Is it possible to make a good X Men movie? Is my oh question. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The problem- you know what's a good idea? Don't put Wolverine in it. Ooh, hot magma take. Mm-hmm. So, like we said earlier, what we got with Spider Verse was that we didn't have to do any more origin. We mm-hmm. we know who Spider Man is. We know I got the powers. We've had since two thousand two to figure it all out multiple multiple times. So we've done that with all the X-Men's. Mm-hmm. So like, if we just want to kind of start fresh and not need any intros or origins, just be like, here's the characters we're doing. Let's be fantastic. Let's be, uh, sorry, astonishing. Yo, astonishing X-Men. <coughs> Let's be uncanny. And it's like- Let's it, be X2, X-Men it, United. So and Don't it, even right. start, man. X2 was- Choice, X two is so good. You should watch it again. I I will watch it, again. Watch it again. Voluntarily, it was better than X three. X three was yo. X3 X3 was, right, well, oh, it's dude. better than anyway, literal excrement. Anyway, sure. So, <laughs> wow. Fuck X three. So <laughs> fuck Brett. Red. Can can we Foster. get a Gaspar movie? If we we are we've already established so much history. Yeah. We don't need to follow that history, mm-hmm. but it exists. True. And so we could just keep telling stories. But we don't need to like ride those chapters. They've they've been established. Right. Like we, we have the general idea of who Wolverine is. We have the general idea of who Professor X is, who Cyclops is. We got that down, and we could make something fresh because we know what those are. Now. How do you think they're going to introduce them into the Marvel MCU? They won't. I have no idea. They're well. They're definitely going to. Like, I can't predict what their plans are. Also, I'm I'm just more concerned with the fact that I was like, they, it's impossible to make a good X-Men movie, and then I violently defend X2 as a great <laughs> X-Men movie. <laughs> I mean, Logan was pretty, a pretty good movie. I like Logan, but I wouldn't really consider it I never saw X-Men. that one. You didn't see Logan? You didn't no, see Logan? No, it was good. I didn't... It's good, man. It wasn't as good as... I, as Like, I wasn't into it as a lot of people were, but it was mm-hmm. still... It was enjoyable. It was weird to hear them, like, saying, like, fuck and shit, and, like... And, like, it's Professor violent. X is saying, fuck. It is violent. <laughs> Plus, you see his dick. I might be describing a dream I had. <laughs> um, I'm sitting here racking my brain like, when do you see his dick? Oh, yeah, it, I'm pretty sure you do see his dick. Was it in a fight with Silver Samurai? And Wheatley's um, in it. The guy like who plays it. Wheatley in Portal 2. In case you're it's wondering. Got some, it's <laughs> got Just to kill that stuff. conversation. <laughs> it's based sort of on Old Man Logan. Yo, do you read Old Man Hawkeye? No. Yo, Old Man Hawkeye. Is, is Old Man Hawkeye good? It's pretty fucking sweet. Yo, what? he fights Bullseye. Logan's based on old man. He fights old man bullseye. Only sort of. In a way, sort Just of. Just like, what if we did? Of. Like he's older. <laughs> he's his his, his, his name is Logan, and he's a man. <laughs> is it the? Mm. We uh. He doesn't kill the uh, the incestuous offspring of Bruce Banner though, which is like kind of the whole reason why I put my money down. <laughs> right? Isn't that a thing in Old Man Logan? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yep. The Hulk gang. Ugh. <laughs> Pretty nasty. Yeah. I really like Old Man Logan. That that book fucked me up. You should read Old Man Hawkeye then. I'm I, probably <laughs> is my response. <laughs> I'm gonna read it. <laughs> I'm okay, read it. I'm right. gonna. Maestro. Let's get a Maestro book movie. Can we get a Maestro movie? What the fuck is Maestro? Maestro is uh, Bruce Banner, Hulk, uh, deciding he's strong enough to just rule the entire world, and everyone has to like bend to his will. Why is it called Maestro? That's what his name is. Hmm. He's like a mega super badass Hulk. He's like an old man. And then when he turns into Hulk, he's still like an old man, but he's an enormous muscular old man. Like Master Roshi? In a way, but like he can just rip anyone's head off like whenever Roshi he Hulk. chooses. And he's also like, he wears this sweet like crown this... of like stag horns. Yeah. Hmm. He's kind of a badass. He's pretty an action figure. Of him. But they, he's kind of done. Did you read the end of Old Man Logan? No. Like the new old man Logan, not the series, not the the one with Mysterio. And Isn't all that regular now. Logan back now? Yes, somehow. How's he doing? I don't know. I don't get it. Don't he got he got new powers. I now didn't read up all the all the 
the uh, the the wind up to it. So like I I grabbed the the new the first issue of like Return of Logan or whatever or Return of Wolverine and I was like wait he's already back I don't know oh, what's he's happening. returned yeah so like have you been reading uh, Otley's and Nick Spider-Man. Spencer's Spider Man yes I have it's it's the the main reason why I got on the book was because Ryan Otley was going to be mm-hmm. on it which again we we talked about last week breaking news that was broken on OMV first Ryan Otley was on Spider Man you're right yep yep you're absolutely right remember um, that John Boy Meyer. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what happened. Um I'm one issue behind on the Otley Spider Man. It's it's great. And I like actually we talked about this last week. It's a lot of fun. Like say what you want say what you will about Nick Spencer. Like I enjoyed um what was the book that everyone hated? Empire? Yeah, Secret Empire. Yeah. I oh, with Hydra Cap. With Hydra Cap. I thought that was a good book. I also didn't read a lot of Captain America up until that point, so I didn't have the history, I guess, that a lot of people felt betrayed by, you know, like... Mm-hmm. Wasn't it, like, not actually him, though? It, it was... <sighs> oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways... So the the Cosmic Cube had sentience as a little girl. Okay. And um, that Dr. Selvig was Hydra in the books. Okay. And something happens to him, and she's like, oh, I'll fix everything. Because Cap wants to stop Selvig, so I'll just make Cap Hydra like Selvig taught me to do. Okay. So she like changed history okay. and made Cap's parents be Hydra, and they raised him to be Hydra. So why was everyone pissed? Doesn't sound like it was real. Because Captain America, is, he's America. He's not a Nazi. And you're turning America on America. Ooh. But it's so, not so real. We didn't, I mean, it's a it's a book. Yeah. But I mean, like, <laughs> but it wasn't actually like it was a it was a so bad thing that happened. We didn't get to that. Uh, until like you know like five six eight months go by or whatever oh okay. so like so when they go oh by the way captain america's hydra now and everyone goes captain america's nazi now and they go well no he's hydra it's like well hydra's nazis relax and then so what so happens like, you need to relax so, so they're like well is he a clone and they're like no he's not a clone and they're like well is he uh mind erased or like no he's not mind erased he's like well is it an imposter no it's steve rogers it's the captain america and so like everyone was asking questions of like how it could not be the thing Mm -hmm. and they found a reason for it to not be all these things people wanted it to be Mm -hmm. like no it is steve rogers he this is how he's always been because they changed history but no one asked the question of like well did they change history yes they did and so, 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 so when once we found out, was everyone like, oh, okay, we overreacted? Oh, yeah, yeah, no one gave a shit anymore. Okay. All right. <laughs> he went back to being regular cap. Because I remember that Hail Hydra thing being like a big deal. Mm-hmm. But to me, I, I immediately was like, there's no way, there's not, that's, there's no way. They, they're going to tell you, like, that's the real shit. Right. But, like, obviously that's not. Mm-hmm. We're getting, we're getting some deep cut action, <laughs> action comic <laughs> stuff. Like, People are like, then, talk about Post Malone again. <laughs> <laughs> and then they talk put, about the shit we saw. They put the whole like Cosmic Cube. Her name is Kobik, by the way. And then they put Kobe her Smolders. No, Kobik. Co- what? The Cosmic Cube little girl. Uh huh. Her name is Kobik. Who named her that? Um, I don't know. Nick Spencer probably. <laughs> did Nick Spencer write Morning Glories? Yes, he did. Yo, Morning Glories needs a TV show. Did you guys watch Dead of Classes pilot? Oh, no. that came out. I'm kind of jumping all over the place. Rick Remender. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're we're deviating from our Spider Man, but <laughs> it, it, to answer your question, yes, I'm reading Nick Spencer and Ryan Otley's Spider Man, and also I can't remember the art. Is it Humberto Ramos? I think that sounds right. Um, who He's drawn who a lot of does, does the, the other five uh, issues? The alternate issues, yeah, yeah. Uh, because Ali does five, Ramos is five, Ali's back for five, and uh, I think it's great. Like you bear, like. You know, the main reason I got in the book was Otley. But mm-hmm. Like, I had no problem with, with the art switch up. You know, if, if it was every other issue, like, that tends to get to Talk me a little to, bit. Just to, yeah. like, for consistency. Or sake. even, like, within the pages or so. Yeah, seriously, dude. <laughs> um, and we were always we were always talking about, like, whenever Otley would put in, like, his sketches up of... So we've been Otley fans for years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For years. Um, for years. And he put up pictures of, like... His Spider Man was always super dope. So I was like, dude, Ali does Yo, the, the perfect Spider Man. I remember so I was hunting good. down the variant that he did for Amazing Spider Man a couple of years ago. I remember we were at. Um, when it was Slot? I think so. Yeah. And uh, I mean, he was on the book for long enough, so it was probably oh, like Slot. 10 years or something. But um, I remember like we were at uh, 
that's entertainment up in Worcester. Mm-hmm. I was like, hey, do you have the Ryan Otley <laughs> variant for Amazing Spider-Man? And they're like, no, nah, we, we have a variant guy, and he just buys them all. I was like, yeah, <laughs> that sounds about right. And then I saw it at the East of the River show at the Golden Gavel. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I was like, yo, how much for that Otley thing? And the guy was like, eh, you got cash? I was like, yeah, he's like, 10 bucks. So I was like, cool, I'll, I'll overpay for that, whatever, I don't care. <laughs> and I got a sign by him a couple years later, which is pretty neat. And it was just like, I don't want to say, I'd like, part of me wants to, in my brain, it's like, is this Otley's first published Spider-Man work? Because that would be really nice if it is. I mean, in so many, possibly, probably. But, uh. Yeah, I like the Otley Spider-Man book. I just love Ryan Otley in general, but it's, 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 it's also just a kicker that his art is just unbelievably good. So good. It's yeah. fun. Yeah. It's fun art. Nobody draws blood as good as him in the business. <laughs> oh, not like, not like we're seeing a lot. Hmm? Not like we're seeing a lot of blood. Right. We see a little bit. Little we're bit seeing a lot of green blood. Yeah, he's killing well, monsters. We, uh, when we were at New York for New York Comic Con, and like I'm looking through some of his stuff, and like no one else was around, and he starts talking to me, and I wasn't ready to have a conversation with Ryan Otley at the time. <laughs> We've talked, to, we're like buddies with this guy at this point. Oh, yeah. We've seen him a bunch of times, yeah. and like we got to hang out, and we've, you know, through him and Zeta and everything. And he's like, ask me questions. He's like, so read, read the, the, you know, the end of Invincible. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, what well, do you think? Pretty wild, huh? And I'm like, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a good dope book, dude. And he was like, "Man, I want to see hang what happens with a Angstrom's kid, right?" And I'm like, "Oh yeah, that's the thing that happened." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I was like, "So how is it drawing Spider-Man and like not drawing gore and blood all the time?" And uh, there was like some kind of alien invasion, and he's like, oh, "I yep. got to fake it because they're blue or green or something." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the same splatter, it's just it's not red. It's just someone's gonna color it a different color. Yeah. Did you like uh, as soon? How caught up are you? I'm not. Oh, I don't yeah. want to spoil anything. But um, as far as Spider Man stories go, like you know, I'd, I'd hinted last time. I, I haven't read a lot. I've read Ultimate Spider Man, the the first uh, uh, omnibus, which is what like thirty issues ish, maybe. Mm, that sounds right. Uh, I've read one of the Amazing Spider Man omnibuses from back in the day, which is around issue three hundred. When McFarlane was on it with David Mich- Michelini, Michelini, when Venom first shows up, mm-hmm. um, and I've read most of that, like for the like, and that was that was okay. It was a lot, you know, the the first panels, you know, like swinging through the city, and mm-hmm. oh, MJ's modeling career is taking off, but I'm <laughs> barely affording rent. You know, you got to <laughs> recap every issue, and uh, and I'm reading the Otley and Spencer book, and aside from that. I haven't read a whole lot else. Like I haven't read the, um, you know, suits in the trash can. You know, Spider-Man sp- no more. Yeah, yeah, I haven't. I haven't read that. Um, like my only experience with that is Spider-Man Two. You know. <laughs> yeah. So, Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah. Um. The like towards the end of the Ultimate Universe, when everything's falling apart and they're. Doing a lot of stupid stuff, literally and metaphorically. Yeah, <laughs> and um, ultimate Peter Parker dies. Yep, and they're having like his funeral, and uh, and Tony Stark is like, "Yeah, we're gonna have a big, you know, whole huge ceremony," and like Aunt kind of didn't want that, uh, but there it is anyway. And they're walking into the church, and there's Aunt May, Mary Jane is there, and Gwen Stacy's there because she's not dead now, and um. There's a point where they have like a mom with her kid, like, you know, by the because they have the long like aisle going up to the church. And this kid like stops her and she's like, Oh, are you are you Spider Man's mommy? And Aunt May is like, Yeah, yeah, I am. And it's like, you know, it's and this child is looks it's under ten. She's like wearing a baseball cap and her face is scarred up. And she's like your son saved me and I didn't die and I want to thank you for that. Uh-huh. And I'm like <gasps> reading a comic book and weeping just from that panel alone. That damn Bendis. <laughs> Got me real good of just this one child being like, I didn't die because of your son. Thank you. And like she still had some scars to show for it. But like that, there was some serious stuff that went down. And now I want to be like, what way she was at it. <laughs> Right. <laughs> what age is when did Spider Man save this kid in the past hundred and twenty issues? That what about me. what about you, Colin? If we're talking like Spider Man stories 
you know, I don't know if necessarily talking favorite ones, but like mm-hmm. maybe ones that stuck with you or, <clears throat> you know, what do you, what do you want to see like incorporated into the next Oh man, thing. I mean, I'm look. I don't want to keep harping on Felicia Hardy, but like, I'm excited for that. Um, her movie. I'm excited for. In terms of like a story that I really like, I mean, it's hard. It's this is a tough choice because it's not exactly Peter Parker story, but uh, Spider Man Blue is mm. uh, mm-hmm. probably one of. I forgot about that best. one. I've read that one too one of the best Spider-Man stories. Really sweet. Just about, you know, it's a story in which an older Peter Parker is um, speaking into his, is speaking to Gwen Stacy, who has long since passed away. Um, and just recapping, like, how, how she had affected him. And, like, this is what it was like when I fell in love with you. And, like, this is what it was like being around you when I was so enamored with you and like what feelings you brought on me and what I was thinking when this happened and when this happened and like there was a lot of real good friendships in there yeah and like when him and Harry and the four of them hang out and, and, mm-hmm. and like Craven shows up at some point and like Flash Thompson like joins the military because he's like you know Spider-Man kind of made me want to be better mm-hmm. um, which is really cool I mean Mary Jane shows up there's that sweet panel with like in the jackpot tiger, all that good <laughs> stuff. Like, and I think that one is really quite, and the art, obviously. I mean, it's Tim Sale doing the art. Um, Secret Wars is fun. The the last page of Blue, mm-hmm. um, yeah, really helped me dig Mary Jane. Yep. Yeah. Because there's been a lot of history and issues where, like, she's a damsel in distress, mm-hmm. or she's at home worrying, and like not really doing interesting stuff or being cool for any reason mm-hmm. but then like we get to the end of blue and and she just like and she just goes me too and yeah, if all of things like she for me. the way she could have yeah. reacted and just be like me too because you peter he peter like i mean he's he's <laughs> dictating a letter to his deceased ex-girlfriend mm-hmm. And his girlfriend walks in on him doing it, and it's, she's like, what "He immediately it's a is lot like, of ways that could have gone. I'm caught here, yeah, um, because it's a loving thing that he's doing, but mm-hmm. Mary Jane just gets it because she loved Gwen Stacy too. Who didn't love who didn't love Gwen Stacy? You know? And Peter says, "Well, I I miss her," yeah. and she goes, "Yeah, me too." Yeah, and that's it. Was a really nice moment. It's really, really I think quite nice. There's I think Sp- like the fact that Spider Man, Peter Parker, is supposed to be, you know, like quote unquote our age in a way although Mm -hmm. we're all old but like I think it makes the character a lot easier to relate to in that like you know if we flash back to 2002 and I gave you guys a little bit of this story earlier you know a a spry um, how old was I 16 what's 1986 to 2002 that's 14 to 2000 plus 2 is is 2 is is 16 16. yeah so spry 16 year old me goes to the movies with his with his best pal Tim to see this newfangled Spider-Man movie and just walking out of it completely like I remember like at one point we had like turned to each other like mouths agape like I can't remember what scene it was but it was just such a mind-blowing movie to us because we'd never really seen something like that and it's like dude it's Spider-Man like and Spider-Man was so cool and then at the end when he when he doesn't tell Mary Jane. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember being furious, but not to the point where I was mad at, like, you know, I hated the movie. I still, it was like the best movie I ever saw in my life. <laughs> but I was just, I wanted him to tell her. I would have told her, but you got to be responsible, blah, blah, blah. And then the obsession takes over. And, and like, you can hear it clanking against <laughs> my mic. That was completely unintentional. <laughs> I, I'm wearing a sweatshirt. I, I got dressed up for the occasion because I knew we were talking Spider Man. Uh, and I'm wearing a hoodie that I I subsequently went out and got after we saw Spider Man during my obsession phase because I had all the posters. I had a guitar strap with a Spider Man patch on it. <laughs> that was a thing of his hand like this with a web coming out, and it said "thwip." And it, but it was too wide That's for amazing. the patch, so the edges curled over, uh, or too wide for the strap rather. Um, I had stickers on my guitar of Spider Man. Um, I and then I had like the sweatshirt that I'm wearing. It's enormous. It is a literal bag on me. 
and I was wearing this when I was 16. I am currently 32. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like it has a f- sweet, I'm going to take a picture of it. I'm going to probably put it in the post. Um, it has a sweet Spider-Man on the back. That is a pretty rad hoodie. It is, right? Yeah. It's a yeah. sweet hoodie. And it's <laughs> this that you keep hearing is me adjusting my mic and all the safety pins that's holding together the sleeve uh, are keep clanking against it. Um, you know, it was just part of my, and like I wore this hoodie into oblivion. The zipper doesn't work. It's like crimped shut, but like I still wore it like every day. This was, I lived in this hoodie. And it just. So you would have told her? Who? Mary Jane. Well, being a stupid 16 year old? Absolutely. I would have told my parents the second it happened. <laughs> Colin? It would be really, really hard not to tell her. Mm-hmm. But I would, I, I couldn't. I couldn't. When, and when she finally finds out in the second one, that was the Funny. sweetest release. <laughs> like, oh, God, thank you. I needed that so much. Now you get it while I'm fucking late all the time. You know? <laughs> um, He's not just absent-minded. Yeah. I remembered your play. I was just saving the city. And I like. I remember there was, a, there was an article that I linked you guys a couple weeks ago from like GameSpot or some shit, which is some guy just trashing the Raimi movies, just shitting all over them because the, they announced that the, the Raimi suit was going to be in the Spider-Man game and mm-hmm. everyone was excited about it and he took the opportunity to just trash it. And it was just a typical, like, you know, I'm doing this to trigger people and then when people get triggered, I'm going to laugh and, and and enjoy how triggered they are because I'm a, getting clicks, I'm making ad revenue. It was and, a lot of someone talking to hear himself talk. Yeah, yeah. 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 But um, I thought it was garbage. I will defend the Raimi Spider-Man movies uh, until my dying breath. I don't even give a shit if you what you think about the third one. <laughs> uh, people like to come at me for no reason whatsoever because I will not say that Spider-Man 3 was not a good movie in my opinion. And that really bothers people. And I, I don't know. I don't know why they... Uh, feel the need to constantly come at me like uninvited <laughs> but like spider like if you want to come at me and say spider-man 2 was not a good movie like i i will ask you to watch that movie again and like just come on and everyone's like the main are oh you know alfred molina was like okay i guess he was like are you kidding me he was awesome he Fantastic. was unbelievable he had again no business being as good at like he's like this kind of like doofy looking guy with yeah. a bowl cut i guess it's doc ock but <laughs> <laughs> and like he he killed it. He was terrifying. Mm-hmm. He could have killed Peter in like fifteen different ways at any point. That but shit, like that movie made me think Doctor Octopus was cool. Yeah, in the sense of like, <laughs> yo, I wish I had octopus metal arms and was a doctor. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I should cut my hair with a bull. <laughs> like you see how easy it was for him to like to get Peter for for Harry like. Mm. Oh, you need... Okay, I'll have him tonight. All right, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> um, his uh, driving force wasn't terrible. And as soon as, like, his, wasn't there a point where he realized, like, well, I could get fixed, right? Because, like, the... Yeah. Because, like, the, the thing that attaches to his neck, right. like, breaks, and, like, that's what corrupts his the brain. inhibitor yeah. chip. Yeah. Brilliant, like he, but he, lazy. He wasn't a bad guy before that. Right. He just wanted to do his job. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's what he got obsessively focused on. Yep. But- um, You should play the PS4 game. It's really fun. <laughs> you really should, Alex. Yeah. I've been yeah. trying to get him to do it for months. I've been trying to get him to budge on I, it. You want to borrow it? I, I've offered. Why are you hesitating? Well, he's never brought it over. So. I, you shot me down pretty hard. <laughs> It was. It's not going to be as good as well, Ultimate Spider Man. So what's the point? Whoa, that was my joking term. <laughs> you didn't say it in a joking way. <laughs> I, so, I need to say something like that and then on. laugh. So hang we on. know. So my, <laughs> I'm really bad. No one can tell when I'm joking. I, uh, I said it was. It was along the lines of I am reluctant because I don't. I so fondly remember Ultimate Spider Man on the Xbox that I don't know if this will be better. Of course, it will be better. And then JR was like, well, I was going to bring it over and to play like before we do that episode that day. And I, was, and I, my thing there was, isn't there like a four hour update before, like as soon as you put it in? I mean, that's with any game, but it's so, and it was also during, 
uh, Christmas. Sca- no, it was during scare time when it originally came out. Uh, so you were busy. You were yeah. you were a busy boy. Yeah. Wrong. So yeah, I wasn't trying to jam it down your throat. And now and then I stopped on it. I like I I pumped the brakes because the DLC started coming out and yeah. I wanted to play that and I would need the disc to play it because I got it on disc. Uh, I mean, on. if if you if you were wondering, guys, if you were wondering, just oh, real quick, yeah. if I have every single trophy that you can possibly, I was good. I was game, just going to ask Colin if he's hundred percent trophies. I have not hundred percented it now. I have hundred percented the main game and all three DLCs. It's not a big deal. He hundred percented it inside of four days. Yeah. No, I hundred percented it inside it of like nine a days. Month ago. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, I mean, to be fair, it is an easy game to hunt. It's probably the easiest game aside from Tales for the Borderlands, which Look, is the only other Platinum game that I ever got. You had to wait an entire year to 100% Arkham City. Arkham City. <laughs> <laughs> There's one that you could... Uh, what was that game? The Stanley Stanley Parable, Parable or whatever it was. It came out on Reddit. They're like, guys, you can finally get the new achievement where it's like, don't play this game for five years. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> but... um. I mean, it was an easier game, and like, there's even one thing in the game uh, with photo locations. There's a one of the last abilities that you unlock. This isn't much of a spoiler, I don't think. It doesn't, but after you murder Miles Morales, yeah, dad, after oh, you cool. kill him, you, you get his eyeballs, um, and then you put them in Aunt May's skull. Yeah. Wow. And then she becomes the Oracle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And well, then Madam Neo, Web. So Neo, yeah. 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 But there's also this ability that you get. Where you can see like secret photo locations on the mini map, the mini map, not the main map, the mini map, which is tiny. You see like a block at a time, and it'll show you like, oh hey, take a picture of this thing. And there's fifty of them on the map, mm-hmm. and I found them all. And there's, it's not even an achievement. <laughs> wow, you don't get an achievement for doing it, but you get a cot. You, hear you get him a, growl that you get the last one, dude. When you're going through this whole, this, there's it's a big map. It is and, a big uh, map. I literally was going street by street. Just swinging up and down the streets like across the entire map, and I finally found it. And you get a, um, you get a new skin. You get a new outfit to wear. Hmm. Not an achievement. Not an, you know. What's so the I outfit? can't. Uh, it's him in the. Um, it's just Peter with a camera. Empire State University T-shirt. Oh, and jeans. okay. It's pretty lame for the. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's wearing the the Spider-Man mask, but um, like I loved that game, and like that was the, that's the first time I've ever bought a season pass for something. When the DLC dropped, they're like, you can, get her, you can buy each individual one for 10 bucks. You can get all three for 25 And I was like, I'm going to get all three. Might as well save five <laughs> And like, five the bucks. DLC's pretty good. The DLCs were fun. It was a lot more of the same, mm-hmm. but also- But I liked the same. Yeah, and you and you get the story. Like, yep, it was, uh, it was very good. scenes and like, yeah. Yep. I really, fun. I can't hype that game enough. That was probably my game of the year. It's, it's, it's tough between that and Celeste um, um, and Smash. My- so my favorite Spider-Man character was in Spider-Verse. Does he also show up in the game? Sp- your favorite character is in Spider-Verse. Tombstone? Tombstone does show up in the game. Tombstone, he was, he was great mm-hmm. in Spider-Verse. Tombstone he is, in Spider-Verse? Tombstone, you don't necessarily Tombstone. have to see Tombstone. He's a side mission, but Tombstone does show up in the game. He's pretty fucking intimidating. He's, he's terrifying in the game. <laughs> like, they, they, he's a beefy boy. They butched him, they butched him up a bit. They buffed, um, they buffed Tombstone in this game. Yeah? Yeah. He needs it. He deserves it a little bit. Yes, He's been so. on it for a long time. He's underrated. He's, whatever. He's better than Hammerhead. Ooh, got him. Speaking That's, of the DLC, he's not arguing for Hammerhead. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tombstone shows up in the Superior Foes of Spider-Man mm-hmm. because he's the new Beatles' dad. There's, like so, Blue Beetle? No, just the Beatle. Jaime Reyes? The Beatle? The Beatle is <laughs> no, a character? Yet. Yeah, I don't. The beetle, the beetle has always been a villain, a Spider-Man villain. Okay, he wears like a like a green and purple outfit. The original one became Mach One through Mach uh, Five in Thunderbolts, <laughs> and then like a girl took over the Beetle, and that's uh, Tombstone's daughter. Oh, look at that! Nice. Yeah. I just learned. Yeah, I learned a thing. And Tombstone's thing is he has like impenetrable skin, right? Yeah, he's he's tough. He's, he's strong. He's, he's like he's Luke Cage. strong and invulnerable. Yeah. Right, yeah. but like, bad, <laughs> and like, he's a also dead. Is he dead? <laughs> that I'm not sure about. Yeah. He just looks dead. Never he's been got explained. like blue paint on him or something. Right. Sometimes he has like 
fang teeth. He has sharp, pointy teeth sometimes. I just remember his his trading card back in the day. <laughs> he was holding up Spider Man's mask. Do you remember that one? It was like the Fleer Ultra ninety four mm-hmm. or something like that. I can't remember. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll go and look it up. Anyways, that's red. Maybe maybe we'll get in Spider Verse two. Um, Richard Fisk grows up to become uh, Rose. Mm. He wears like this purple mask with Uzis and like yeah. tries to kill the Kingpin. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. That happened in the 90s, by the way. 90s comics. Thank you. Good old 90s. Yeah. I'm just excited that we're going to get more of it. It's all really cool. <laughs> I'm excited for the Spider-Man PS4 sequel. I'm s- only kind of excited for Far What's that going to be home. called? Turns out when you Google Tombstone Trading Card, you just get a lot of guns. <laughs> A lot of guns. <laughs> Anyways, continue. <laughs> I don't know. I want a multiplayer Spider-Man game. Do PS4 and then, but like also like. Would there be like team up? You know, like I want to be, you be Ben Riley. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. why mm-hmm. not? No, I'll be Superior. Have we discussed God, who are, roll his eyes is, is so Superior hard. Spider-Man your favorite version Rolled of Spider-Man? Eyes. Uh I asked him who his favorite Spider-Man was, and he said Peter Parker, so can't change it now. <laughs> I couldn't think of my options. You you said who's the best Spider- and You know what? I wasn't thinking right. So um, you think Otto Octavius is the is the, is the superior Spider-Man? Hank. Hank Henshaw. Right, he he got results. We're not uh, saying which one's the best. Jared asked me which one's my favorite. Uh-huh. That is a different question. Yeah, that so, is different. That is different. Yeah, I'll take the Superior Spider-Man. Which is recent. Yeah. Not so much anymore now. Like how no, many that, was like, like that was three years three ago. Three or four years ago. <laughs> yeah, about something like that. What about you, man? I It's tough you for like me. You like Spider-Punk. Like, Spider-Punk is probably my favorite looking version. I don't, I don't know much about the actual character itself. Mm-hmm. Um, Spider-Jerusalem, uh, that's one, right? Spider-Jerusalem. Huh. Journalist. It's a neat pull. <laughs> Alex is really dug very that. disappointed in me because I have never read Transmetropolitan, <laughs> so I don't know who I'm referencing. Uh, I just know that he has glasses. I like if in terms of like how they look, you know, Spider Punk's cool. Spider Man Noir, I think, is dope, and I thought Nick Cage did great with him with the, with the Rubik's cube. Yeah, <laughs> but um, I mean. God, that is a hard... I just sprung the question on Alex and expected an immediate answer. And now when it's put on me, I'm like, uh... uh <laughs> how do you how dare you ask me this? <laughs> I mean, if I had to pick like a favorite version of Spider-Man, the one that stuck with me and resonated the most would, would be Toby. Because hmm. like that one just... It changed like all I, wa- I wanted to be Spider-Man, you know? Like that, that was it. You wanted the organic webbing. Gross. I wanted that, that fishing line jizzing out of my wrist. Mm. <laughs> I, it was just, it was fun and it was, it, I dug it. That was like my childhood, man. I yeah. loved Spider Man. So I'd, I'd probably say, I'd probably say Toby as, as blasphemous as it is it's these not, days. It's not blasphemous, man. I don't have a problem with that. You know, I, I dig them all. Man. I guess I'm I like, making it out to be more of a big deal than yeah, it is. I like yeah, Toby, <laughs> I like Andrew Garfield. I, I like get really movies. defensive. <laughs> I like Tom Holland. Everyone's got something different to bring to the table, man. You know. Uh, well, you oh, know. Boy. I liked Garfield's I first think, one. I didn't think that was a controversial thing to say that everybody's bring something to the table. Like I, remember, I, remember, I can't remember. I if immediately even... want to be like, what did Andrew Garfield bring at all? I thought I thought he brought an awesome fucking Spider-Man. He brought that that awkward like I'm like coming into myself, but I don't really know what to do about it. Like because I thought Amazing Spider-Man the first one was good. good. Were we even doing the show when that when that came out? (laughs) I I might even be on record saying I hated it, but I remember. I'm pretty sure we did a review of it. I think like and I remember enjoying it. My first episode. I remember the only thing I had a problem with was like wait yeah so the one lizard guy is good now. But what about the rest of the city of lizard people? There's still a whole city of them. Right. That was like my main qualm. I just really didn't like the second one. Um, no, I think uh, Andrew Garfield brought a lot to it. I think his his Peter Parker, granted, was cooler. The problem with <laughs> the problem with Andrew Garfield is like that's a good looking dude. You know that that Peter Parker. Yep. Not gonna have a hard time getting dates. You know and he was a little bit. <laughs> he was kind of cool. Um, but I think his Spider Man was like really funny. 
and his suit was the dopest. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 suit was the best one that's ever been in a movie. That's a hill I'll die on. <laughs> <clears throat> Respect. That looks dope. Um, Stick to your guns. Yeah, man. And I think he quips way better than Toby's did. Toby McGuire was like... That's, like, that's one like, thing that the, that the Toby spider lacked. Yeah. Hey, you look... Like Stupid. a girl. <laughs> <laughs> You're a dumb face. You're gay. <laughs> Roasted. Doesn't he, doesn't he say that to Macho Man? Doesn't he say something that's like, oh, he's like, that's a, Mildly homophobic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but more accepted in 2002 for some reason. Oh, boy, oh, boy. That was, there was the point. Yeah, so he's that's like, why I like my Andrew Goffey. He's more tolerant. So he's taller? <laughs> Is that? I just heard tall. When Peter Parker came back to his body after Dr. Octopus left his body, and they were having <laughs> comics, they're, they're yes. having, they were having a lot of problems. There was a big problem with Goblin and his Goblin army, and he was a Goblin king. And Norman Osborn was doing this whole thing, and he had he was trying to deal with Superior Spider-Man the entire time. Mm-hmm. And he figured out he knew it wasn't Peter Parker. He knew you know someone else something was happening, and then like Peter Parker gets his body back. And like they're fighting, and Pete like says one of his quips, and like three panels is just zooming in on Goblin's face, and he's like, "It's you." (laughs) (laughs) Like he's like, "That's how he knew Pete was back." (laughs) The quips are important. Yep, they are. Yeah, Yeah. and I like the quips because like tough to get them right. (laughs) We both kept trying. Like I'm not stopping. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. Uh, they're quips that don't require breaking the fourth wall, which I dig, you know, most okay. of the time, mm-hmm. you know, like yeah. it would be really easy to do that. Yeah. Like Deadpool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. I just wanted, I just wanted Fuck to shit Deadpool. on, I just wanted to shit on Deadpool for a hot second. Uh, Deadpool. <laughs> I'm glad you I'm in a up movie. On. Yeah, we know. Don't, I'm trying to enjoy the movie. Like, you don't have to tell me where you're taking know, me out of this. I know you're Ryan Reynolds. That's not funny. <laughs> It's tough though because I really enjoy the Deadpool Ryan Reynolds movies. though. Pretty pumped for that Pikachu movie. Me too. Yeah. Detective Pikachu again. No business as good as like be, looking that as good as it looks. Like looks. it's gonna be the bomb. That's but, gonna be uh, the most bomb assiest movie of next year. Bomb ass. <laughs> Can't wait. Did you see the Bulbasaurs in the trailer? Yeah, they looked. So good. They looked choice. Oh, they were choice of source. I stocked up on some t-shirts, hoping they'll they'll sell good. <laughs> nice. That's what I have Good to old so, capitalist game. <laughs> Spider Man. It seems to me like I think the two out of the two out of three of us teared up during this episode, and I don't think that's ever happened in the past. No. <clears throat> I think that speaks volumes about Spider Man and what Spider Man means to people, and how people are able to write Spider Man and portray Spider Man to really kind of resonate with people. Like while I wasn't. Like, I don't tear up over many things, but I get obsessed with things, as evidenced by my enormous sweatshirt that I still have 16 years later. <laughs> I think that it's a character that even though I'm, I'm, I always tout myself, I'm a DC guy, not really much anymore, but like, Spider-Man was still always that one. It's like, what's up, Spider-Man? I see you. Mm-hmm. I, I see you there. I feel you, dog. You're doing you. You're, you're the most... <laughs> When you cut, when you go down to the most basic form, you're you're a man that can do spider things, <laughs> but like you're still able to make grown men tear up thinking about the things that you've endured and the character that you are. And have have we seen like the a bunch of the memes or at least like you know story storyline clips of like things that he's done in the comics and every once in a while like a batch of these will come out, and it's like uh, Thor brings Loki to New York, and Spider Man and Thor are hanging out. And Spider-Man's like, oh, Loki, you're not like a bad guy right now? And Loki's like, well, just hanging out with Thor. <laughs> and he's like, so on a scale of I want to kill the world, one to ten, where are you at right now? He's like, mm, about a three. He goes, okay, <laughs> when you hit a six, call me. <laughs> and like, and then he does. And Spider-Man like, takes him swinging mm-hmm. through New York. He's like, let's have hot dogs together. Let's go visit this hospital. I want to read this issue. Let's go do some cool stuff. And they do fun stuff. I think Ramita Jr. does the art for that one. That sounds pretty dope. And and Spider-Man just like bees a person with Loki. He bees a person with him. <laughs> to like defuse him. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And like, and it's great. I mean, Spider-Man, there's always, there's always those bit. Did you ever see the thing? I don't know what, what book it's from. He didn't have to punch anybody. He's just like, no, we'll just, we'll just hang out. There's a, He's not wearing a hockey pads. <laughs> there's a series of panels with like, Spider-Man's with Captain America, and they look like they're on like a stakeout. Mm-hmm. 
and so, and like Cap's like looking through binoculars, and Spidey's just sitting next to him, and he's like, <laughs> "So, did you like get beat up a lot as a kid?" <laughs> and Cap like it takes like a beat, and he's like, "Yeah, I guess I did." And Spidey's like. Me too. <laughs> and then they just moves on. I was like, that's fucking cool, man. <laughs> you know, I like that interaction they had in Civil War in that movie too. Like, yeah, where he's yeah. like, where I'm from Queens. Mm. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Yeah. Um just There's always there's always great little bits like that. There's the they were on the Avengers team and uh, some huge like cosmic shit's going down. Mm-hmm. And Moon Knight is like, hey, I kind of spaced out just now. It was a really bad time, but what's happening? <laughs> Classic Moon Knight. <laughs> Vintage Spectre. <laughs> and Spider-Man's like, all right, in 10 minutes, just punch whoever I punch. <laughs> I mean, if Spider-Man were to tell me that, I would trust him. Oh, yeah. You know, there are other heroes who it's like, wait, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I don't really... I mm. like I'm probably going to end up punching who you punch, but like I might question why I'm punching them. But like, if Spider-Man's telling me to do that... yeah. There's, there's a lot good, of there's, there's a lot of fun chance. to be had. Yeah. Mm. This is fun. Guys, we have been talking for a very long time about Spider-Man. I believe it is time. 2 weeks worth of Spider-Man. We hope everyone enjoyed. What what are you showing me? I I can't so commit to this when we're recording, man. You show me a long ass meme. So there's a point in Spider-Man 1 <laughs> yep. where Green Goblin goes after Jameson, Willem Dafoe and J.K. Simmons, and he's like you get pictures of Spider-Man. Where do you get him from? And he, Jameson doesn't rat out Parker. He doesn't give out his lead? Like, his his life is on the line. Goblin's going to throw him off the building or hit him with a pumpkin bomb. And he's like, they come in the mail. I don't know where they come from. And, like, Jameson respects his business and his reporters enough to not give him up to a supervillain who's just about just to enough. kill him. Good old Jameson. Yeah. Yeah, but not quite my tempo. <laughs> Yo, the whiplash pull. Have uh, yeah, we watched it together. Well, I almost to be like, have you seen Whiplash? Because we need to watch Whiplash. Don't get me started about. Well, all right, that's, that's we're still going another hour. Do you think Sorry. J.K. Simmons will be more remembered for J. Jonah Jameson or his performance as um, Jim Gordon? As Jim G. Y. M. Gordon, because <laughs> he was hella swole. This <laughs> week. <laughs> Uh, I like to think he'd probably be more remembered as as James. You're probably right. I didn't remember who he was on Law and Order. He was the law. He was Law and Order guy, right? Before he was Jameson. You're thinking of Chris Maloney? No. Yeah. Are you thinking the the ball guy? Yeah. Different guy. He was in. He was really known for Oz beforehand. He was was in Oz. He was like a white supremacist guy. I'm gonna look this up later or something like that. I I could be totally wrong. I just know him as uh, the guy from a bunch of stuff. Wasn't he? (laughs) Was he in Juno? He was in Juno. He was the dad in Juno. He was the dad in Juno. He p- popped up in an episode of Parks and Rec. He plays the yellow M M&M and M in the M M&M and M commercials. Oh. But oh, he yeah. didn't know that. He's in the Farmers commercials. We are farmers. Bum pa dum bum. Bum bum bum. Bum bum bum. Yep. Uh, he won an Oscar for Whiplash, which I, if you haven't seen Whiplash, I very much like Whiplash. It was he in Oz. Can you please confirm that he was in Oz before? He's we in. Went? He's in Oz. He's in Oz. Yeah. Okay. We need to end our ramblings, Colin. Thank you so much for joining us these past two episodes. It was a lot of fun. I had to give you guys a double tap. When you give me a topic like Spider-Man, like I go for a third if you want. Yeah. You want me to come <laughs> back next week? Probably. I'm here. Probably. You know? Uh, yeah. I was happy to good do times. it, so thank you. Thank good you for times. all that good stuff. Go see Spider-Verse. Go read some Spider-Man comics. Yeah, yeah. Bring support, me pictures of Spider-Man. Support your local, your local comic shop and buy some Spider-Mens. Even mm-hmm. the Spider-Women's. Uh, Because they are uh, equally as amazing. Mm -hmm. Don't buy the Spider's Man, though. They're creepy. The Spider's Man. That's just a man of spiders. That's going to do it. I'm done talking. So until next time, I have been JR. I'm Alex. And I was Colin. And this has been episode 357 of Opinions May Vary.